Can I tell you something about, about wealth? Those who don't sit down to learn the principles will begin to envy and get angry at those who are paying the price to attain it. And let me tell you, if you don't sit down and take this serious, tomorrow you'll be angry at your friends and your colleagues. That's why God is bringing this our way. Are you getting blessed tonight? There are two important factors that must be at work in your life for you to attain financial freedom. And that's where we are starting tonight. I love doing this teaching. Timeless principles. Number one. Why are people poor? Why are many believers poor? Why won't God just open up the heavens and flood it with cash? Why are many tongue-talking believers? Why are some of us still struggling with our school fees? Our parents are still struggling. They've been trying to build houses for donkey years. It has led them into all kinds of things. We have called all kinds of people to come to our house to collect the remaining money that is left. All in the name of praying with, with all kinds of candles and garbages in our house. The Bible says that they know not, neither do they understand. He said, so the earth is out of course. I'm trying to provoke someone tonight to the end that we will pray. Hallelujah. Number one, you will never become financially free. Not according to the kingdom's way if you do not see the need. That's the first point. There are many believers who do not see the need. There are many ministries who do not see the need. Every time they raise the subject of financial education, you see this spiritual atmosphere that people put and feel, no, 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 don't, we are pressing into God. There are new dimensions. And let me tell you something. There's an error I've seen in the body. Many believers just believe that you just keep praying in tongues and you are praying and then one day the heavens will be open over you. Let's finish up this, this story and you'll find out that many people are going to be disappointed after 10 years of serving God diligently. Question. The Bible says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today and forever. Is that correct? Look up. How many of us can bear me witness? That there are many of our parents who are campus fellowship presidents. Some of them are pastors. They've been praying in tongues for years. And they are still poor. Can anybody agree with me on that? Why is that so? There are even many of our families that have not missed out on tithing and giving for once. But they are still poor. How many of you have been tithing, tithing, tithing? It's just that you don't want to say it. But it has been paining you. Because it looks like something is wrong somewhere. And can I tell you something? The error is not from God. It's certainly not from God. Open our eyes tonight, Lord. You must see the need. So many believers do not see the need. Every time you are talking, they have this air of, ah, I'm a lady. I'm going to get married to a rich man. I've, I've made up my mind. Any poor man carry his, his, his promises and come close to me and see what I'll do with him. There's no manifestation. Pack your load and go. Wrong mindset. Got it from culture. Got it from films. Got it from all kinds of things. You must see the need. What does a need do to you? Number one. A need creates dissatisfaction. The Bible says, Woe to them who are at ease in Zion. You can never break through a process until you get dissatisfied. Hallelujah. You must get dissatisfied. You must get dissatisfied. Get dissatisfied with the fight and the quarrel that happens between your father and your mother at all times. Get dissatisfied. The Bible says through desire. Proverbs 18 verse 1. A man having separated himself, he intermeddled with all wisdom. There must be a desire. When you see the need, it creates a sense of responsibility. So many people are blaming the government. We blame our parents. We blame the government. Ah, they are chopping our money. They stop giving us scholarship. If that they were giving, my mind would have changed. Oh, my, my lifestyle and all of that. I would not have been sleeping around. Calm down. You truly begin to break through in any area when you stop blaming people and accept responsibility. Say after me, inside and outside, in the name of Jesus, please say it like you mean it. In the name of Jesus, 
I stop blaming people. I take responsibility over my financial destiny. One more time, say, I take responsibility over my financial destiny. Yes, a need brings you to a point where you, you stand to take responsibility. Many of us are waiting for our parents to die. We are praying and anticipating. On their deathbed, we come to visit them, but we can't wait for them to die. Because we are waiting for something they call inheritance. And before a man would die, the, the illness and the parents are already arguing about how to share things. Number two, or still still on that point of the need. A need breaks every limitation. The moment you see a need for something, limits will be broken in your life. Hallelujah. How many of you have gone for lectures in the rain? Let me see your hands. Ladies, how many of you have exposed your hair to the rain, but you still didn't stop? You just ran for lectures. Why? When you see a need, you will not see limitations again. So many people see limitations. And the reason is because they have not seen a need. We are waiting for the day we inherit wealth from our parents. My father told me, as soon as I'm graduating, a Lexus will be waiting for me and one two bedroom I've been eyeing. And your whole life is built on that mirage. The word of God declares, hear me, woe unto any man who puts his strength in a man? That man can be anybody. Your father, your mother. You know that song? Um, your father may let you down. It's not because he's a wicked man. Your mother may let you down. Even you yourself, you will let yourself down. The best and the greatest of any man is still a man. I told myself, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence I, I, I gladly retired from putting my strength in men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, the first, the first factor is what? You must see the need. Say after me, I see a need to be financially free. Number two, when you have seen the need, the second point is you will go for knowledge. The second point is to go for knowledge. You will never become financially free just by guessing and stumbling your way into it. A great man said something. He said, if you wake up and find yourself rich, be sure you were not sleeping. Hallelujah. Many of us have this mindset that, oh God, one day, one day, we have been receiving things that are hanging in the realm of the spirit for donkey years. But the Bible says, let it be done in the earth as it is in the heaven. That means it is possible that although a thing is in the heavens, but it cannot be done in the earth. Hallelujah. Go for knowledge. And the first phase of going for knowledge, are you getting my point? The first phase under going for knowledge is to change your mindset. Change your mindset. We'll talk on that right now. When you have seen the need and come to a point where you say, Look, nobody in my lineage and my family has been able to bless anybody. All I inherited was what people call generational curses. That's what many of us came to know. You just knew that nothing has been working in your life. Now God has done everything by the revelation of His word. And by the reality of your position in Christ He has brought you to a position Where you realize that all of these ordinances Have been nailed What are you going to leave for your own children Hallelujah I am convinced That my entire generation Is blessed because of me Bible says in thee shall all the families Of the earth be blessed Change your mindset Change your mindset Change your mindset the difference between let me show you something Proverbs 22 verse 2 I believe Proverbs 22 can someone read please someone read very quickly then let me have two people I need someone who looks like a rich man come on help me I mean someone to start <laughs> alright start here hallelujah 
Aaron, you can stand here. Listen, listen to this very interesting scripture. All of you look up. Go ahead. The rich. The rich. And poor meet and together. And the poor. They meet together. Where? In this big earth. It says what? The Lord, the Lord is, the maker. is the maker of them all. What kind of scripture is that? It said the rich and the poor. They all meet in the same place. It said God is the maker of them all. Look up. The Bible never said God is the maker of them so. God didn't make them so. He made them. They made, they separated themselves. Look up. There is a difference between the rich and the poor. And the difference is not money. Write it. Burn it into your head. I'm shouting so that it will enter your spirit. The difference between the rich and the poor is not Naira and Kobo. Believe me. Change your mindset on that knowledge. Hallelujah. Okay, so watch this. Call this guy the rich. God forbid this is just for... Hallelujah. Call this guy the poor. Are you listening to me? Look at this. The basic difference between the rich and the poor is what? Their mindset. Say after me, their mindset. So the difference between where you are right now, no matter how tongue-talking you are, and where God wants you to be financially is what? Repeat after me, my mindset. Don't be ashamed of it. This is a training ground. Say my mindset. I don't care what excuse you have to give. Let me tell you, there is no situation you are in right now that someone has not gotten to a worse situation and conquered it. Whether it's that your parents are late, whether it's that you were born, your, the, the map of your village is not in Nigeria, that's irrelevant. Are you listening to me? So we are going to examine the mindset. Please get this. There is something the rich do that make them rich. There is something the poor do that keeps them poor. Are you getting blessed tonight? Number one, the rich accept responsibility while the poor do not accept responsibility. Look at our society and see why people are poor. All we are saying, give us now. And people lead themselves with placards. How much? Two, two thousand. And they stand from morning till night. Go to offices of influential people and see a row of people waiting to seek for favor from morning till night. Say, oh God, well done. No, I've been trying to... I was wondering if it was possible to see. And the man said, mm -mm, I'm busy. The poor, the rich hate the poor. And he said, leave me. I said, oh God, well done. No. And you see the guy running. And his, and his children. Now, how many of you have seen your parents do that kind of thing? I'll never forget when we used to rear goats. We never ate one. Never. Suffered for it. Did everything. And, and where were the goats going? Government workers. As I was carrying the last sets of goats, it, was, I, it pained me. Because the Bible says a, 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 a worker is worthy of his wages. You work so hard only to make the rich richer. Isn't that amazing? The poor walk from morning till night. While they are walking, the rich are playing them like a chess. What you people call your job is someone's company. And the person is crossing his leg and playing the economy of nations like a chess. And the poor are running. You work so hard. As soon as you make your money, you take it to the market and you come back poor again. Only to wait for another month. When will it end? The poor work so hard, so hard, and take the money to the rich. So what's their difference? Number one, this guy accepts that I'm responsible for my finances. Yes, my parents didn't try. Yes, the government didn't try. But I take responsibility. These guys are choosing this super and saying, Hadibi is my uncle, my uncle, God, that child, I don't know work here. You think so? And we are praying. My father's brother, sister's cousin is the commissioner. And that guy never calls. God punished him with this. 
Hallelujah. Number two, this is one of the biggest points between the rich and the poor. As you write it, underline it. The rich have mastered the art of delaying instant gratification. Paying the price today to enjoy the blessings tomorrow. The poor, they don't like delaying instant gratification. Sharp, sharp. Now, let's drop today and die tomorrow. That's the mindset of many Nigerians. That's why we like all kinds of things. Get rich quick. This and that. There's one way. Bring 1,000. Go under the bridge. In the evening and come, I'll give you this. We like things that don't have processes. Hallelujah. But the Bible says, seed, time, harvest. Hallelujah. So the rich know how to delay instant gratification. I've said it everywhere. That's why I love Igbo people. Oh no, no, come on. Don't think what you think I'm thinking. I said this during Kingdom Well Summit. Come on, I was innocent. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Because they have mastered the art of delaying instant gratification. You see a young man, they just give him scholarship 50,000. And then he carries the BB thing, Blackberry, 40,000. Out of 50,000, what you have, home and abroad. Give me your ping number, your ping ping. That is driving people crazy, especially ladies. All around, give me this. It looks like that's a happening thing. Give me Blackberry. And you squeeze life out of your parents. You must give me that 40,000. They say we are traveling to, to Cameroon. You have not gone for how many years? You have been gathering Cameroon money. Then you finally buy the Blackberry. And then you don't have the amount to be recharging this every month. Say, sorry, what's wrong? Say, no, this phone, you know, all these kind of things. I hope to change one soon. There are so many people who have put themselves under stress. Because our concept of finances is that get, spend. Just get and spend. And we guys know how to do that. Hey, guys, I don't hammer. Oh, yeah. And all the psychophants who are out to finish your money will follow you. Then you go to Peter's. Say, oh, yeah. Help yourself, Jerry. Can I tell you something? No matter how much tongues you pray... God will never empower you beyond your level of managing His resources. Never. God will never empower you beyond the level to which you can manage His resources. Because the earth is the Lord's. doesn't belong to you. Are you getting blessed? Instant gratification. How many of us have been feasting on the seeds that God has given us? Can I tell you something? This is God's principle. God will tell you, Selina, run down there and you will meet a great harvest. When you run to that farm, you will see a bag of seeds with wisdom to turn that seed into a harvest. He said, Lord, where is the harvest? God said, right there. That is it. Many people do not understand God's system. And that's why we get disappointed. Help us, Lord. Number three. The poor spend and spend while the rich save and invest I cannot tell you how I feel sad over many church people we know how to shout and call forth wealth and that's important if you have not been calling forth money brothers and sisters believe me get set you are violating a serious kingdom law and you are going to remain poor say ah when my uncle has told me in the call okay oh. We have warned ourselves in this place to stop depending on men. Doesn't mean that God will not use men to bless you. Hallelujah. The poor spend and spend. Isn't it amazing that those who are the richest in this environment are the ones who are modest and visionary. Those who are the ones loud and doing all of these things, they really don't have much. The pressure of trying to prove a point. I said it during Kingdom Wealth Summit. I was, I was taking an extract of these many ladies. You are changing your weave on every week. 
giving an impression like you're a multi-millionaire and you know you are not. Let me tell you something about pretending a status you have not yet attained. The day your money finishes, you will be forced to still maintain that status, although you don't have the means. You have sworn hellfire for anybody that eats in zinc house. Now your fortune has gone. Your father has told you because you are stubborn, you will not give you money again. You are hungry, you are dying. The Holy Spirit is advising your guy to you enter this zinc house. And you have given yourself a mindset. How can I at my level? Not so. Look up. Let me say this. Are you getting blessed tonight? Look up. Please let me correct something. Money can come through favor. In fact, according to God's economic system. Alright. There are many ways that money comes. Remember 2009, 10. 10. Kingdom Wealth Summit. Money cometh. Hallelujah. Money can come through favor. Let me give you an instance. God can tell me, say, Josh, sow 10,000 naira to Reuben's life. That's favor, right? Strangers can come and feed your flock. That's favor. Listen to me. What we do not understand is that money does not grow by favor. Money can come by favor. Money cannot grow by favor. There is only one biblical way of increase and multiplication. Say after me, investment. Say it. There is only one biblical way of multiplication. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. I'll try to really, really be fast. Quickly, let's turn there. Matthew 25. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. How many of us are seeing some light over our finances right now? Thank you, Lord. Matthew 25. If you are there, say Amen. Okay, verse 14. Matthew 25, 14. Inside and outside, make sure God has your attention tonight. This is very important. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling into a far country who called his servants and delivered unto them his goods. Unto one he gave what? Five talents. Talent means money. Many people say it's gift. No, it's not gift. It's money. Exactly that. To another he gave what? To another he gave what? He says, according to his ability. And straightway he took his journey. Hallelujah. Read verse 16 everybody. One to read. Hold on. He went and invested. The word traded there is he did business. Are you following me? Who gave them the talent? What did the master expect them to do with it? Multiply it. Correct? And the Bible didn't say they, hold, they held their hands together. Say, Are you ready? Oh yeah, fire. And then they started. Bible says they went and did business. Are you listening to me? Hmm. Help us, O oh Lord. Okay, verse 19. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. 20. And so he that received five talents came and brought what? How did he multiply it? Did you see that he multiplied it again? Are, are, you, are you following me? The word of God teaches us the principles. I hope you know he said the kingdom of God is likened unto this. Is giving us the economic principle of the kingdom. It says, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained. Does that look like an investment language? I have gained. Doesn't look to me like a prayer language. Beside them, five talents more. Verse 21. His Lord said unto him, what? So what does God tell those who multiply his resources? Okay. Let's see how good you have been reading your Bibles. Thou hast been what? So he calls it faithfulness. Over a few things. I will make you ruler over what? Are you seeing how to increase in the kingdom? I will make you ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. 22. He also that had received two talents came. And then 23. Let's read on. 
And then he said that he also gained, you know, and um, verse 24. Looks like many of us. Are you ready? Now read. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that thou art a hard man. Stop. Are you seeing the mindset of the poor? They always give excuses. Always give excuses. Said, Lord, I knew that thou art a hard man. Doing what? Reaping where thou hast not sown. And gathering where thou hast not straw. 25. And I was afraid. Fear. And went and hid my talent in the earth. Hold on. Isn't it amazing that he put the talent in the earth and it didn't grow? I thought you put seeds in the earth and they grow. But this guy did something to his talent. And although it was under the earth, it didn't grow. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. 26. Listen to what God is telling many tongue-talking believers. And this is why we remain where we are. In spite of the Baba Sharada great future. Hallelujah. God is saying that's beautiful. But one thing thou lackest. Thou wicked. Ah, look at the kinds of words. The only other place this language was used was those who healed in his name and did all of this. It says, wicked and what? Slothful. New Testament language. English says, lazy. Lazy what? Although you can be a servant, you can be a lazy one. Down the west that I, where I sowed not, and gather where I have not sown. Verse 27. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I would have received mine with usury. In other words, according to God's system, the worst form of investment is putting your money in the bank. Interesting. He said you would have at least done that one. Hallelujah. He said what? Take therefore. This is a fearful scripture. Are you seeing why the wealth of many of our parents have disappeared? Although they are Christians. Take therefore the talent from him and give it to who? This wealth conversion that many people are saying is leaving the unbelievers. Some believers will be shocked that it will also disappear from their own hands. It's in the Bible. All three were called servants. Yet it was collected from one and added unto another. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's hurry up. The poor go for results. They like results. They don't want to know the process. Give me fish. Don't teach me how to fish. There are so many of us that have been blessed by wealthy parents. Never for once have we asked and said, Daddy, Mommy, I'm of age now. Can you begin to teach me? Can you show me? You have been very successful in your finances. I've never cried for school fees. I've never begged. Can you teach me? What did you know? 